Now, this righteousness of God is secured, as we've already seen, by faith and not by works. But now listen again to verses 22 and 23. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, let me give you a free rendering of these verses. Even the righteousness from God, which is obtained by faith in Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all that believe. For there is no distinction. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of of the approval of God. Now, this is a righteousness that's by faith. It's not by works. Now, this faith, the Lord Jesus Christ made clear when they asked him. They said, how can we do the works of righteousness? He answered, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he hath sent. That's John 6, 28 and 29. And the important thing about securing this righteousness of God is not that there's any merit in your faith or there's merit in just believing. Because actually, faith is not a work on your part. The object of faith is the important thing. Spurgeon put it like this. It's not the hope on Christ which saves you. It's Christ. It's not thy joy in Christ that saves you. It's Christ. And it's not thy faith in Christ that saves you. Though that be the instrument, it is Christ's blood and merit. Now, friends, that's very important to nail down to your thinking. And that righteousness is like a garment. It comes down to all, but it only comes upon all that believe. But it's available to everyone. And then he says, it's available to everyone for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, that doesn't mean that there is not a difference in sinners. I think I can illustrate that with a very homely illustration. When you come to California, and I'm sure some of you are going to, and you would like to play a game with us, we have a game out here that we play. It's called Jumping to Catalina. Now, Catalina is about 20 miles from the shore of California, and it's out in the Pacific, this island is. Now, we'll go down to the pier at Santa Monica, and we'll take a big long run and jump and see who can jump to Catalina. Now, somebody's going to say, but that's a pretty big jump, and I want to tell you it is. Now, we could have a lot of fun. You know, chances are you could jump farther than I could. Say I jumped 10 feet. That'd be pretty good for me. And you'd jump 15 feet. And you'd say, look, I jumped farther than you did. That would be true. But you'd get wetter than I would, and you'd have to swim farther back to get to the shore. May I say to you, nobody would jump to Catalina. Now, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody's made Catalina. Nobody's able to come up. Some are better than others, but it's rather childish to play a game like that and say, I jump farther than you are, I'm better than you are, and I'm better than half of the church members, suppose you are, and I guess you are. But what difference that makes? You have not come up to the glory of God. Now, let me come to the next verse here, and that's verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, Freely, here is the same word that is used at the time when the Lord Jesus said, they hated me without a cause. That's John 15, 25. That is, they hated me freely. That is, there was no basis for it. What he's saying here, that is, Paul is saying, being justified without a cause. That is, there's no explanation in us. God doesn't see something in us that says, oh my, they're such wonderful people. I'll have to do something for them, and pats us on our head. As we've seen before, there's nothing in us that would call out the grace of God other than our great need, and that's what it is, being justified without a cause. And it's by His grace, and that means that there is no merit on our part, and grace is the unmerited favor, as it's defined, 
I like to say it's love in action. And it's through the redemption. Now, redemption is always connected with the grace of God. The reason that God can save you and me is simply because of the fact that Christ redeemed us. He paid a price. He ransomed us. He died upon the cross to make it available for us. You see, justification by faith is actually more than subtraction of our sins. That is forgiveness. It's the addition of the righteousness of Christ. In other words, we're not just merely restored to Adam's former position, but now we're placed in Christ where we shall be throughout the endless ages of eternity, the sons of God. You know, John Bunyan was driven almost to distraction because he realized that he was such a great sinner and he had no righteousness of his own. And he said at that time, when God showed me John Bunyan, as God saw John Bunyan, I no longer confessed I was a sinner, but I confessed that I was sin from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I was full of sin. And Bunyan struggled with the problem of how he could stand in God's presence even with his sins forgiven. Where could he gain a standing before God? And so walking through the cornfields one night, as he wrestled with this problem, the words of Paul, who was another great sinner, by the way, who called himself the chief of sinners. And that word of Paul came to him, and his burden rolled off his shoulders. The word from Paul was Philippians 3, 9, "...and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ." the righteousness which is of God by faith. And when we read Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, you're reading actually the story of Bunyan's life. And you remember when Pilgrim came with that great burden on his shoulder through the slough of despond. He didn't know what to do until finally came to the cross, and there the burden rolled off, and he trusted Christ as his Savior. Now, this is the way God saves. It's by grace. This is the fountain from which flows the living waters of God down in this age of grace. And so because of what God has done, putting his son to die, God is able to save by grace. And Paul in Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, But God who's rich in mercy, that means he's got plenty of it, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And Dr. Newell said of that grace, the grace of God is infinite love operating by an infinite means. The sacrifice of Christ and an infinite freedom, unhindered now by the temporary restrictions of the law so that today a holy God is free to reach down, and to whosoever we are, it'll meet our needs. It'll save us in our sins. How wonderful that it is today to know a holy God is free to see those or to save those who will trust in Christ. And Dr. Newell again said, everything that is connected with God's salvation is glad in its bestowment. It's infinite in its extent, and it's unchangeable in its character. And my friend, it's all available and only available in Christ Jesus. He alone could pay the price, as Peter put it, to the nation Israel. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 